Hello, my name is Ruben Mesa, and I'm the Executive Director of the Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist Comprehensive Cancer Center. And delighted to be joined by this wonderful panel of experts in myeloproliferative neoplasms for us to take a deep dive in myelofibrosis. We're grateful to Blood Cancer today for us to be able to share with you some of the exciting updates on the diagnosis and therapy of patients with myelofibrosis. We've described, I think, very much in depth kind of for JAK inhibitors, there is overlap. It, it's been a big step forward. It's, it's uh, clearly been helpful. It's really impacted patients. I mean, it's rewarding to see all of that benefit. However, we clearly know that, that we're still not where we want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be causing remissions. We ideally would like to be curing patients. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, even, even our best responders rarely are things perfect. Mm -hmm. So now we're in an era of, of a variety of new things coming. You know, maybe I'll ask just each of you what, what, what kind of excites you. We've got CalR antibodies. We have combination studies with Pelabresib and ROX, uh, Navidoclax and, and ROX. We've got uh, myriad studies in, in, in clinical trials. Uh, Teresa, why don't I start with yourself? What, what are some of these things that are the most exciting for you? What are you hopeful that they'll achieve? Yeah, so I'm most excited about the two um, phase three trials um, that you know have come up earlier, which is the uh, roxalitinib and nevitoclax uh, randomized trial, and then the rox and palabresib randomized trial. I think both of those drugs and those results were impactful. So I'm very excited about the prospect that one or both drugs may be available. Um, and then we, uh, we will be able to build upon that. So, um, and then there's a myriad of early phase trials that are percolating. Um, and of those, um, the CALAR directed therapies, um, to me, uh, the most exciting. And I'm really eager to see how those unfold. Wonderful. It's, it's, Adam, let me phrase it for, for, for you in terms of our ability to, to diagnose, to monitor, uh, uh, you know, things that are evolving in terms of other myeloid malignancies that may have relevance in this space. You know, what from the hematopathology world are you excited about that may help us have a, a greater impact on MF patients? Sure. I think, you know, with, again, this is something that we discussed earlier, uh, but I think with the role of inflammation becoming more and more prominent in myeloid malignancies in general, mm -hmm. right, going from clonal hematopoiesis to MDS, or, you know, in AMA. But I think primary myelofibrosis is the poster child of a pro-inflammatory myeloid neoplasm. And I think we can, you know, we can have studies where we can comprehensively, you know, do immune monitoring and immune profiling in these patients, similar what, to what the ICMDS is trying to do, right? There's, a, there's an initiative through actually I4MDS, sorry, not ICMDS. So I4MDS, where there's a concerted effort that, where I4MDS is trying to come up with a standardized immune profiling um, method for patients with MDS, I think we can do the same for MPN and, you know, potentially learn and also, you know, have targeted therapies that we can, you know, hopefully help these patients with. You know, I think we would welcome that to a great degree because yeah. yeah, we've, what we've not had is really anywhere near that rigor. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had a range of trials that have done somewhat trial specific panels, yeah. right. mm -hmm. you know, but frequently not necessarily in a serial fashion. Mm -hmm. right. You know, is it IL-8, is it okay. TNF-alpha, is, is it whole profiles of an inflammasome? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I'm hopeful that, again, we have these large phase three trials that have been done that hopefully we can really do a mm -hmm. deep dive in, you know, who were the best responders. Absolutely. You know, I've alluded to, we've got some patients who have had really long-term responses yeah. uh, on ruxolidinib of more yeah. than a decade. Yep. You, know, you know, how do we, we study all these have folks? those yeah. patients, Because yeah. yeah. there may well be a Absolutely. signature to say, yeah. you know, boy, you Absolutely. hit these yeah. six cytokines. Yeah. Absolutely. Your, your leukemia-free survival improves. Absolutely. Right. And you know, if I may just say this, the, the perfect time to do this would be when you're writing the protocols, when you're designing yeah. yes. the clinical yes. trials, right? Yeah. To advocate for this, to build yeah. this in the, into the protocol. Yeah, because yeah. you, so, right? you totally got to validate yeah. Against, yeah. against a response. Absolutely. You, you know, we've been seeking biomarkers, but the only way you validate biomarkers yeah. Absolutely. is by comparing them to, 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 to two things. Outcomes, uh, yeah. Naveen will give you kind of the, the final word. Uh, what are you excited about in terms of the uh, evolving therapies? Do you think it's going to be combinations? 
Where do you think it's going? Yeah, I think we're entering into a golden era for, for our MPNs and you guys nicely summarize it here. I do think that the excitement is going to be what I would call moving beyond Jack. So we have this beautiful um, almost 20 year history now since 2005. Next year, actually 2025 will be the 20th anniversary of the elucidation of Jack 2 V617F. And I think that's been the backbone, that's been the starter of our field. But as we've been discussing here, I think you have this tripartite excitement, right? One is the combination agents, as you mentioned, BCLXL and BET inhibitor being the furthest to develop, but there's others coming, XPO1, MDM2 inhibitors. Two is the novel agents that stand alone by themselves. So whether it's telomerase inhibitor, BCLXL, BET by themselves, whatever, CD123, I think that's super exciting to not only do in the relapse setting, but then move it up into the front line eventually. And then finally, Toyosi, as you mentioned, the mutant-specific era has now begun. So CalR-directed therapy is exciting, whether it's vaccines, monoclonal antibody, or bispecifics. And then don't forget about mutant JAK2 or even type 2 JAK uh, inhibition. So trying to hit the JAK2 mutation in a more specific way than we've done before. All of that is exciting. All of that, I said, is in phase one or higher clinical trials, so we'll see what happens. You know, m myself, I'll end by saying that I I'm just excited by, you know, the, the depth and breadth of the team that's really trying to contribute to this. Mm. Yeah. You know, we've got discovery scientists really trying to understand the dynamics of the clonal neoplasm and how that's evolving. We clearly have people trying to, uh, again, take a deep dive into, you know, next generation jack inhibition, a uh, CALAR uh, targeted therapies, uh, uh, candidate biomarkers of, of progression. You know, although it's not a common disease, it's heterogeneous. That's right. You, you know, and I think any sort of single, single, you know, uniform approach again is is not likely to be beneficial. Right. You know, I I tell folks that although it's a, it's not a large group, you know, all these things end up being relevant for other things. Mm -hmm. You know, we've seen, again, with bruxolitinib, it's now approved for everything from vitiligo to GVHD, GVHD you know, uh, uh, on and on. So, yeah. you know, we don't have to fear that, uh, boy, you know, having a therapy, it's only going to help these people. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it'll it, evolve in other things, you know, but I think, you know, the more tools we have that we can really match with patients, you know, really the, the better off we are. Thank you so much again for joining us today for this Blood Cancer Today uh, event where we have focused on model fibrosis. I hope you walk away with the same spirit uh, of hope and anticipation that we have with uh, evolution in our understanding in the biology of the disease, uh, new diagnostic capabilities, new ways we prognosticate. Now four FDA approved JAK inhibitor therapies, numerous combinations that have been part of phase three clinical trials and very exciting phase one and phase two uh, therapies in development. So uh, excited to uh, update you in the future as we see more and more progress.